Now, seven years ago, can you believe it was seven mm. years ago, 29-year-old Martin Het was one of 22 people killed in the attack at the end of an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester. And last week, we spoke to his mum, Fegan, as she began her walk of 200 miles from the arena where Martin died. She's going all the way to Downing Street to demand stronger protection against terrorism in public places. Well, Fegan joins us live now, along with Brendan Cox, whose wife, Jo, was murdered in 2016, and Charlotte Dixon Sutcliffe, whose partner, David, was killed in the Brussels metro attack. Morning to you all. We can see it is challenging weather for you today, but Fegan, just tell us, first of all, how are you? How's it going? Yeah, I'm good. The walk's going really well. We are being very well supported by lots of people joining us. Um, the weather has been incredibly hot, so whilst we welcome cooler weather, um, I hope the rain is going to stop soon. <laughs> Having seen the forecast, Fegan, I'm not sure that's not necessarily the case, but um, I had to be honest with you. Charlotte, let, let's turn to you. Why is it so important for you to, to join Fegan's campaign and literally join the walk? So, um, as Survivors Against Terror, Fegan's one of the co-founders and she began the campaign about five years ago and we were on board quite early and we've supported her the whole way. Um, she's an amazing, inspirational woman who wants to make the UK safer, who wants to make venues safer and like all survivors and all members of Survivors Against Terror, she's motivated to ensure that what happened to Martin and what happened to our loved ones doesn't happen to anyone else. So it's really important for me to be with her today. And Brendan, I know you and Fegan have been friends through tragic, tra tragic circumstances for years now and you have supported each other. How important is it for you to support her today? It's great to be here, and I mean, even even given the the weather, um, you know what Fegan's doing is is inspiring. As as Charlotte said, lots of people who have gone through similar things who want to back her call, both because they share the the pain and the trauma that that Fegan has been through, but also because we want to make sure no one else has to go through this. And the reality is, the government knows that there is a loophole. They know that there's a security gap. They promise to fill it. But until that legislation has been enacted, nobody is safer. Draft legislation doesn't save any lives, and that's why we're joining here, frankly, partly out of desperation. Fika, we're seeing some pictures now of you leaving Manchester, close to the arena site, last week as you began this 200-mile walk. What, what kind of conversations have you been having with members of the public along the way? Maybe people who are not directly involved in your campaign, but who are now hearing about it through what you're doing. Yeah, do you know what? Along the way, people recognised us and, and stopped us to have a chat and we explained things. Uh, we gave up badges so uh, that they took with uh, great interest. And uh, um, they all said they'll follow the story and, and support us. So we have public support along the way. Uh, even the hotel staff along the way are recognising us now, so that's good. Um, but, you know, we are being uh, followed by more and more people who join us along the way. Uh, not, not just victims of terrorism, but uh, from across um, all fields of society. Um, so there's a real um, interest in, in this and a real support for this. And Fegan, I know because we have talked about this here on Breakfast, I know that you had a significant conversation with the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak some time ago now. The end goal is to get to Downing Street. Just remind us what you're going to say to him. Yeah, on, 20, on the 15th of December 2022, which would have been Martin's 35th birthday, I had a long conversation with Rishi Sunak on the phone. He did, during that phone call, say how, how supportive he is of the legislation and how um, he's behind it and that he will make it happen as soon as he possibly can. That conversation is now 18 months ago and I've been really pretty patient and like Brendan says, this is now almost de desperation and I want to just sit in front of him and say, why don't you keep your promise, please keep it. Charlotte, uh, you lost your partner David in, in the Brussels bombings, didn't you, in 2016. 
every case is different, mm. every loss, every person is different who is lost. And yet, well, maybe you can explain the, the bond that brings you all together. So I think losing someone to terrorism is quite a unique experience. To know that your loved one has died because they've been a, a symbol of the state and often there have been failings behind um, security measures, so things that could have been in place to protect our loved ones weren't in place, things were overlooked. And I think that's what makes Martin's Law so important because we hear from inquiries over and over again what could and should have been done. And when it isn't done, and when you see the list of failings that led to your loved one's death, I think it brings us together to ensure that no one else goes through what we go through. And Brendan, just before we go, I have to ask you, you know, several years on now, here you are campaigning, supporting. How is life for you now? I think things like this inspire all of us. The, the, the ability of people who have gone through the very worst to use their own personal pain to try to make sure no one else goes through that. And that gives us all purpose, I think. One of the reasons we set up Survivors Against Terror was to make sure that we can support people like Vegan and others. And that, that solidarity, that connection that we have across hundreds of different survivors from different attacks is really powerful and I think that keeps us going when when times are tough. Um, so yeah, and I, I really hope, as, as Vegan was saying, what we need now is the Prime Minister to name the date. When will that legislation come to the House of Commons? That's the thing that will turn all of this effort, you know, the years of campaigning that Vegan has done, into purpose and into meaning. Thank you all and we wish you all the very best of luck. And if you see them outside somewhere today, maybe offer them a nice cup of tea. Absolutely. Yeah. 100 miles done. Yes. 100 miles to go. We'll catch yes. up with them next week. That's